हेलो फ्रेंड्स वेलकम टू ईपीजी पाठशाला आई एम नेहा डांगी असिस्टेंट प्रोफेसर इन कॉमर्स छाजू राम मेमोरियल जाट कॉलेज हिसार The topic for today's discussion is research foundation in organizational behavior. By the end of this module, the students will be able to learn the basic concepts of research, the quantitative research designs, to know about the qualitative research designs. They will be able to learn about the miscellaneous designs of research in organizational behavior, and lastly, they will be able. to study the techniques of organizational research let's start with the introductory part of the research research may be defined as the systematic collection of information and facts the main objective of research is to help an individual to search the truth research always adds to the continuing knowledge it supports certain theories opposes others and also recommends some new theories to replace those that cannot be sustained the way of communication of a researcher is by using their own terminology this terminology of research has been discussed as number 1 variable a variable may be defined as a common characteristic which can be examined and is subject to change for example we can say job satisfaction among employees work stress personality productivity of employees etc the second terminology is hypothesis hypothesis may be defined as a tentative assumption of the relationship between two or more variables under study it remains a tentative assumption until it is tested by doing an empirical research for example an assumption that by taking a part in the athletic meet of the college a person can grab a top executive position in a big company is making hypothesis the third terminology is dependent variable the variable which is being explained by the researcher is known as dependent variable it is a response that is being affected by the presence of an independent variable the examples of dependent variables in organizational research are job satisfaction productivity absenteeism turnover etc next comes the independent variable the variable which is responsible for bringing about an assumed change in dependent variable is known as independent variable the examples of independent variables in organizational research are motivation rewards selection methods leadership style experience etc next is the controlling variable the variable which decreases the effect of independent variable on the dependent variable is known as controlling variable and the last one is causality causality implies cause and effect relationship between the variables a change in independent variable will cause a change in dependent variable for example behind happiness of an employee there can be an assumed cause of high productivity of the employee now we will discuss about the research methods in organizational behavior research is very important in every field as without it answers to problems will merely be on the basis of presumptions organizational behavior uses various research procedures for the study of behavioral problems the researchers in organizational behavior they make use of both quantitative and qualitative research designs for conducting their research work these research designs can be discussed as number 1 quantitative designs the most popular quantitative research designs which are being used in behavioral research are number 1 correlational research the relationship between two or more variables is termed as correlation productivity communication leadership styles job satisfaction motivation are all variables in organizational behavior 
all correlations are practically calculated with the use of Pearson product moment correlation. The abbreviation used is R and it ranges from 0 to 1. The number 0 shows no correlation and number 1 shows a perfect correlation. Therefore, greater the number, stronger will be the relationship between the variables. A negative correlation implies that when one variable increases, the other variable decreases. One can make prediction of the amount of one variable more accurately by knowing the level of the other variable if the correlation between the two variables is higher. For example, if the correlation coefficient between training and motivation level of employees is greater than 1 or it is 1, then one can easily predict the amount of training given to the employees and the motivation level of employees. Correlational research tells us the mathematical relationship between the two variables. It does not tell the cause or reason for the correlation between the two variables. For example, if there is high degree of correlation between the monetary incentives given to employees and their productivity, then we can predict an employee's productivity on the basis of monetary benefits given to them. One getting more benefits will be more productive and the one getting less benefits will be least productive. But one cannot determine the cause or reason behind this correlation because monetary benefits cannot be the only factor that can lead to higher productivity. There may be some third variables such as attitude of employees that can be held responsible for increase in their productivity. The second type of quantitative research design is survey. The most popular method for the collection of data in research in organizational behavior is conducting a survey. A survey is conducted with the help of a questionnaire in which the written responses of the respondents are being recorded. Now we will discuss the merits and demerits of a questionnaire. First of all, the merits of a questionnaire. Number one, economical. It is the most economical way of getting written responses from a large group of individuals. A set of questions can be drafted and several copies of those pages can be produced and distributed at a low cost. The second merit is uniform procedure. There is a uniform procedure of asking the questions to every respondent. Third is wide coverage. A large number of individuals can be covered with the help of a questionnaire. Now we will come to the demerits of a questionnaire. Number one, rigidity. Questionnaires tend to be rigid or inflexible. Sometimes the information does not give the idea which an investigator wants as the questions are in yes or no form. This problem can be solved if these are designed in a skillful manner. Second is, it is subject to demand. The respondent sometimes tries to interpret the questions from the wording, title and effect of earlier questions and give their answers accordingly. Thus, a questionnaire is prone to demand. Third is, negligence in designing and administration. Sometimes there is negligence in design and administration of a questionnaire because of its ease in writing. Number four is incomplete responses. The respondents do not provide complete answers to questions and sometimes they return the questionnaire without duly filled responses to the questions. And the last demerit is wrong interpretation. There is also a chance of wrong interpretation of questions by the respondents even if proper care has been taken by the researcher in framing the questions. The third quantitative research design is factor analysis. Factor analysis may be defined as a statistical measure which shows the extent to which two or more variables are related. It also reveals the amount of clusters 
which exist in a group of variables by exhibiting the variables which are linked with group. It means which variables are so powerfully correlated with each other that they denote some common characteristic, skill or factor. For example, let's take a group of employees and the five variables which are to be measured that is performance, motivation, incentives, age and health. Make an assumption that the first three variables are strongly correlated and they are not related with the last two variables. Thus, factor analysis shows the extent to which the three variables, performance, motivation and incentive will form a cluster which is termed as loading. Now we will discuss the qualitative designs for organizational research. Number one is field study. The observation of an individual or an animal in a natural environment is known as field study. This method is used in routine when a research is to be done in organizational behavior to find out the correlation between two variables. In case of field survey, the individuals are ignorant that the researcher is observing them. This fact has raised some moral questions when the subject of research is human beings. Second type of qualitative research design is interview. Interview is the most common and most popular qualitative research design which is being used in organizational behavior research. The researchers in organizational behavior use this method to examine organizations at the top middle and lower levels. There are several merits and demerits of an interview which has been discussed. Merits are number one, high response rate. In an interview, the response rate is high as the respondent cannot avoid the interviewer. A respondent can also be approached via telephone. Second is face-to-face -face conversation. There is a face-to-face -face conversation between the interviewer and the respondents which helps in making an evaluation of the respondent's self-confidence, mindset, level of nervousness. The physical features such as dressing sense, postures, gestures and grooming can also be seen via an interview. Third is complete answers to questions. Complete answers to questions can be obtained with the help of an interview by setting up a connection with the respondents. Number four is high flexibility. A structured interview contains a pre-decided set of questions which are to be asked from every respondent. There is rigidity in this case. On the other hand, semi-structured and unstructured interviews are flexible as an interviewer can ask any questions from the respondents. There are certain demerits of an interview also. Number one is lack of standardization. There is no standard procedure of taking an interview. It starts in the same manner, but the interviewer is bound to change according to the behavior of the respondents. Thus, there is lack of standardization in case of an interview. Second demerit is biasness. An interviewer can be biased while interviewing a respondent on the basis of the physical appearance of the respondent. This prevents to bring any change. Third is it is expensive. It is considered to be a very expensive method of collecting information. The fourth demerit is uneasiness of respondents. Respondents show uneasiness or nervousness as an interview is a face-to-face -face conversation which hampers the responses which are needed to gather the information. The last demerit of an interview is uncertainty of being a reliable predictor. The success of a respondent in the interview cannot be considered to be a trustworthy predictor of his or her success on the job. The third type of research designs include both quantitative and qualitative research designs and they are known as miscellaneous designs. They include number one, archival research. 
the type of research which involves the examination of people's present as well as past behavior is known as archival research. In other words, it is a method of collecting data from sources that already exist. The popular examples of archival research are census records or survey data that was collected in the past. For example, in order to determine that whether new machinery produces less wasted motion, the researcher paints the floor area of both old and new layouts with short life paint. After a month, the floor wear and tear around the two layouts can be compared. Second type of miscellaneous design is longitudinal study. A longitudinal study, also known as longitudinal survey or panel survey, is a quasi-experimental research design which consists of repeated observations of the same variables over a long period of time, usually decades. These studies are frequently used in psychology for the study of evolving trends over the lifespan and in sociology to study life events during lifetimes or generations. Longitudinal studies use the same people and the differences which are perceived in those people are expected to be the result of cultural differences through generations. Thus, these studies make observations more accurate and are also applied in various other fields such as medicine, social sciences, advertising, etc. A common example of longitudinal research is the Hathron study of a period of 12 years. Such type of examples is very exceptional in research in organizational behavior. Number three is case study, a report about a person, group or situation that has been studied is termed as case study. A case study about a group will describe the behavior of each member of the group. The researches based on case studies are very popular in many disciplines and professions such as psychology, anthropology, sociology, political science, clinical science, social work and administrative work. Now we will study the types of case studies. Number one is descriptive case studies. Such type of case studies uses one or two occurrences of an event to display the prevailing situation. Second is pilot or exploratory case studies. These are the case studies which are performed before conducting a large scale investigation. Third type of case study is cumulative case studies. Such type of case studies aggregates information from different sites collected at different times. And the last type of case study is critical instance case studies. Such type of case studies examine one or more sites either to examine a situation of distinctive interest or to test a highly generalized or universal statement. It is useful in providing answers to questions of cause and effect. Number fifth miscellaneous design is experiment. The procedure which is carried out to support, disprove or authenticate a hypothesis is termed as experiment. They provide understanding of cause and effect by validating what outcome arises when a particular factor is manipulated. Experiments usually include controls that aimed at minimizing the effects of variables other than the single independent variable. It will increase the reliability of the results usually through a comparison between control measurements and other measurements. If in an experiment the controls work as per the expectations of the researcher, then it can be concluded that the experiment worked out as projected and the results are due to the effect of the tested variable. Now we will discuss the types of controls in an experiment. Number one is randomization. In this type of control, the groups 
that obtain different experimental treatments are determined randomly. It safeguards that the differences are distributed equally, thus correcting systematic errors. For example, the researcher divides 10 employees into two groups. The list of employees is prepared in an alphabetical manner and first five employees of the list are assigned to one group and the other five to the second group. Now, an observation is to be made whether the performance of the two groups would be the same or not. Second type of control is matching. It is a statistical technique which is used to estimate the effect of behavior by comparing the treated and non-treated units in an experiment. In other words, this concept of matching is used when random treatment is not given. This concept has been supported by Donald Rubin. Third type of control is experimenter bias. A researcher has some emotions regarding the results of an experiment. There are chances that he or she unintentionally may affect the results of the study. This affect or influence is termed as experimental bias or e-bias. It can be controlled or monitored by appointing a specialist or expert to conduct the trials and this process is known as blind control. It means a researcher who is not informed about the objective and expectations of the study are not likely to create biasness. And the last type of control is control of demand characteristics. Demand characteristics have relation with the fact that with each and every involvement there is an implicit demands or potentials. It has been made clear from the Hearthstone experiment that it was the demand characteristics of involvement rather than the changes in the work environment which had an impact on the performance of employees. In order to control demand characteristics, the researcher may adopt a double blind control in which neither the experimenter nor the contributors identify which is the treatment and which is the control and it should be certified that instructions to the contributors should be kept as impartial as possible. Now let us discuss the techniques of organizational research. There are mainly five techniques which we will discuss. Number one is sociometry. In this technique of organizational research, all the members of a group are requested to point out their relationship on a particular dimension with every other member of the group. For example, an assignment can be given to them to name those people whom they like and from whom they want to get something done. Another task can be with the name of each member providing the number of messages sent in the last one month. The researcher by merging all the answers or responses will be able to figure out the relationships, skill ratings and effectiveness of message. The second technique is position analysis. In position analysis, a comparison is done by the researcher between the requirements of the job and the capabilities of the person working on that job. The main objective of such type of research is to minimize the mismatches and to make a finest match between the capabilities and the job requirements. In case of any inconsistency, there arises the need to make changes in the task or reallocating of such tasks to the employees. For example, if a manager is made responsible for evaluating the performance of the sales representatives, but he or she doesn't possess the knowledge and skills of computer system and can evaluate only on the basis of sales reports of a quarter, in such a case, a manager needs to appoint someone who can make an interpretation of that data or he should learn how to operate a computer system. 
third technique is communication analysis in communication analysis the path of the message is being tracked by the researcher in order to identify at what stage there arises a blockage or delay in the message for instance in a firm which is being disturbed by regular chit chats and by grievances related to poor communication the employees are directed to take part in a job or assignment or project in order to identify the degree and nature of communication gaps they are provided a form of communication record in which a listing is to be done of each hour of every working day for a week a recording is to be made in the form about the type of messages received and about the level of person from whom the message was received on the basis of such information management analyzes and tries to find out the changes which are to be made in the communication system a copy of the report after the changes is sent to all the members next technique is discretionary analysis the technique of discretionary analysis helps in evaluating the position of employees by making an analysis of their freedom to work without any supervision or restrictions this technique is known as discretionary analysis as it measures the freedom of choice or discretion of employees for example the employees may be questioned that in how much time they would be able to complete a given assignment without the supervision of their superiors the employee's proficiency will be higher if he or she will be provided with the freedom of choice or working without any direct control of superiors and the last technique of organizational research is comparative analysis a comparative analysis of the organization can be made with some other organization for example the employees may have complaints regarding their non involvement in management decisions the president of union can make a survey in other organizations that whether they are allowing their employees to participate in the management decisions on the basis of that survey a representation can be made before the management to appoint a representative on the behalf of employees that can be involved in the decisions of the management thus it can be concluded that there are various research designs which can be applied in doing research in organizational behavior quantitative designs include number 1 correlational research number 2 survey and number 3 factor analysis on the other hand qualitative designs include field survey and interview there are also some mixed research designs such as archival research longitudinal studies case studies and experiments thus the various techniques of organizational research are sociometry position analysis communication analysis discretionary analysis and comparative analysis there are some points to ponder also number 1 is research may be defined as the systematic collection of information and facts number 2 correlational research tells us the mathematical relationship between the two variables it does not tell the cause or reason for the correlation between the two variables number 3 the most popular method for the collection of data in research in organizational behavior is conducting a survey number 4 is factor analysis may be defined as a statistical measure which shows the extent to which two or more variables are related number 5 the observation of an individual or an animal in a natural environment is known as field survey Number 6 interview is the most common and most popular qualitative research design which is being used in organizational behavior research the type of research which involves the examination of people's present as well as past behavior is known as archival research next is 
a longitudinal study also known as longitudinal survey or panel survey is a quasi experimental research design which consists of repeated observations of the same variables over a long period of time usually decades next is a report about a person group or situation that has been studied is termed as case study and the last is the procedure which is carried out to support disapprove or authenticate a hypothesis is termed as experiment sociometry position analysis communication analysis discretionary analysis and comparative analysis are the techniques of organizational research thank you